What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, it's an end-of-week wrap-up. We could see that the cryptocurrency market is green for the most part today. Looking over here at the altcoin market, we can see that we are actually green for this week as well after 11 consecutive weeks of red. Now, the last three out of four weeks have been green as we've been paused here on top of the 200-week moving average. So positive to see that heading here now at the end of the week. The Dow Jones, the stock market is also up, recovering all of yesterday's losses and more. Yesterday, I really dived deep into why this level is so important of where we're at right now for Bitcoin and for the altcoin market. And that I know a lot of people are looking for one more dip a little bit lower. I kind of went through all the different reasons on why another dip may not come. And if it does come, if we actually break below the levels that we're at right now, I think the consequences of it are far more severe than just being, hey, buy the next dip. But that there are a plethora of reasons to say this is an interesting price level that the market is at currently. Now, as we're heading into the weekend, similar to like what happened last weekend, right? We were like, all right, we're back at the 200 moving average on the four hour time frame here for Bitcoin. We're back there again. We can see that it's like poking through. But the cold hard reality of it all is, is look, it's still just within a range, right? So even though the moving average has caught up to it from time, it's not like price levels have particularly broken, which is kind of what we saw back in here. So it is still just a waiting game on Bitcoin. We could actually see that Ethereum is doing a little bit better on working its way out of that moving average. But at the same time, it's still stuck within the bottom of the range. Now, of course, everybody's going to point back to what the last fall looked like. But, you know, things are slightly different in here from compared to the last fall. And this looks a lot uh, awfully familiar to what the bottom of the Bitcoin bear market looked like back in 2018 from its accumulation structure to eventually breaking out. But of course, this is over the course of one month and two days compared to Bitcoin back then. It was like four or five months. So as the range just continues going, everybody's making their best guess on uh, which way is it going to break. But like I said, Either we're at like generational support levels here in the crypto market with Bitcoin back at its 786 Fibonacci retracement level, the absolute last Fibonacci retracement level since the rise started back there in March of 2020. So a break any lower takes out all retracement levels and things are probably a lot more gloomy than they seem. But currently where we're at right now, it means we're still holding all retracements and that the collective market cap of the entire altcoin market is just back testing its all time high on top of its 200 week moving average. Go any lower than that, then things really start breaking. So looking at how Bitcoin's price action is playing out currently as we head into the weekend, one would probably not want to see it start falling down again below this. You'd want to see some follow through come in here so we're not like staring at this saying hey this is kind of what we did last time we just you know we weren't able to get through it on the first try we just kind of teased ourselves above it the next time and then off and away we went i was kind of playing around with ethereum's price chart in here to say you know what did this look like before it ended up falling its way back down you could see here like at this point, you know, it was already starting to turn itself over. So this is a little bit different in here, but definitely want to see some more follow through come through to start kind of like really being like, this isn't just ranging because that's what it is right now. It's still just ranging. So we have to get through one way or another before we can be like, oh, whoopee, or ah, the sky is falling because neither one of the range boundaries have been broken. Get out of the range and then we could start like seriously entertaining things happening. But while we're in here, it is just that. It is just the men. We have to see some type of action to sit there and say something is different between this moment than this moment or this moment or that moment or that moment as you're in the middle of here. While we sit here and wait on it, we could say, oh, it looks awfully familiar to what happens when reversals end up showing themselves out in here after capitulative phases come in. Certainly looks awfully familiar to that. But we'd need to see a breakout on the top side of it first to start really entertaining it, or at least I would. But no, no question, it's looking awfully familiar. Another interesting thing of something that just is a little different, and it's only because we've actually talked about this the last two weeks. I've probably brought it up in two videos. Maybe I've brought it up in three, but that at 10 a.m. UTC time, every single Friday, a seller shows up in here over on the XRP price chart over there on Bitstamp. There's some seller who shows up at 10 a.m. UTC time every single time, every single Friday. But what can we see about this time right now? It's the lowest sell volume that we've actually seen happen in here. Going back to all of these and go look at all these throughout time. Like these are usually much more sell volume compared to the small amount of sell volume that we're seeing coming up in here. So 
quite interesting to see that showing up that the seller did arrive they arrived right on time but boy it's dismal selling of what they're actually doing today and i'll move us over here to the two hour time frame so you can see it there it is 10 a.m utc time every friday and here you go there you go there 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 and now here interesting right so don't know what it means but it's the lowest that we have seen so Nice to see that the seller doesn't want to sell, or I don't really know what it means, whether it's Jeb McCaleb, whether it's something else, whether it's a trading bot, market maker, I don't know. But it is nice here. We are at the end of this week, and we've had a relatively now green week again here in the cryptocurrency market, which you know you wouldn't think, right? What what are the things that have transpired over the last couple of weeks? I mean, we've seen the DXY break out. We've seen the US dollar currency index break out, and the crypto market being unaffected by that. That's been pretty remarkable. And so for Bitcoin, what I would be hoping to see is to see that we'd see the same things that we saw happening over there with ethereum and that it can start marking marching its way back up to the top of the range if we start seeing the price fall at if you see like a thousand dollar price fall happen in bitcoin again well then you know we, we've seen that story before happen over here where it wasn't able to get through the 200 moving average on the four hour time frame and well we're still just in the same boat that we've been in in here but a continuing move back up to the top of the range, getting back up near $22,000. Well, then it makes our structure continue to look like things that look like reversal structures in here. So for Ethereum, you get above $1,300 throughout the weekend. We may already have reversals underway in this market. So that's kind of the key things that I'll be watching for over the next couple of days is that if Bitcoin can still even just kind of stay flat or continue marching its way up, but any type of bigger move back down, back towards that $19,000 price level again, then it's just showing, once again, another one of these rejections coming in here. So for the next few days, hoping to continue to see a slower grind or a quick breakout to keep the optimism alive. But we see where we are with Bitcoin right now. Still, it's not in the clear. And based on things, how they played out in the past, uh, the next couple of days will be probably pretty big deciding factors in here especially with what Ethereum's been doing in here. It seems like a deciding factor is coming pretty soon. And hate it or love it, it seems to be our stock market. That's really telling us that, right? And it's the same thing in here, right? Where we've been in here since June 13th, like we just talked about over there with Ethereum, Bitcoin, the market cap, all of it. We've been at this level since June 13th as well. And we can see the stock market working back up in here near this upper boundary of the range as well. So still, we're tied to the stock market. The stock market's finishing Friday. You can see right now we're up 600 points right now. There's still a little over four hours left in the trading day over here in the stock market for the remainder of the week. It's re I've seen this thing flash into green a couple of times right here on the weekly candle, whether or not it will or it won't, but it's still been holding on in here just like the altcoin market, just like the crypto market on top of the 200 week moving average. But again, multiple weeks being able to hold in here. And the exact same thing that's been happening in crypto has been happening here in the stock market with the same structure. Might look a little bit more familiar on this hour time frame in here to see all that. That there's your crypto market and there's your stock market on the exact same time frame. So there's still four hours left on that. Hopefully at the end of the week, uh, which is in four hours from now. So <laughs> when you're watching this video, hopefully the stock market does close, can still stay up there. But Hopefully Ethereum is telling us the picture right in here with a much clearer picture of how this all played out in here with that final kind of capitulative breakdown that happened in here with the capitulation with Bitcoin going back down into the 17,000s uh, a couple Saturdays ago and then how we've worked our way out in here and been trying to kind of get through these areas now and hopefully, hopefully we're on our way. And I think in the next couple of days, things will probably develop a lot. And like I mentioned throughout this week that I won't be here Monday through Wednesday of next week. I'll be over here on Twitter. I'll be posting over here on Twitter. If there's a way for me to get something onto YouTube, I'll try my best. But we have I have to have the expectation that I won't be here on Monday through Wednesday of next week. That's a whole five days from right now. A lot can play out with that structure right in there between those five days. So I'll do my best to get stuff out. Um, but I definitely will be over here on Twitter posting about it at the time. So if you're not following me over here on Twitter, you can follow me at BC Backer. But essentially where we're at right now, looking for another break, if Ethereum can get above, you know, 1280 or 1300 really. And if Bitcoin can keep grinding its way up and we don't see some move back down to $19,000, things look pretty optimistic right now. But barring a big move, if Bitcoin moves back down to 19,000, then it's like nothing's changed, man. <laughs> but based on that structure that Ethereum's printing over there, it's looking pretty optimistic right now. So still, it's a range. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated over here on Twitter. 
We'll see if we get a weekly candle close again over there on the altcoin market. It'd be three out of four. And hopefully Bitcoin can maintain that 0.786 or the 786 Fibonacci retracement level. So quick little update today, guys. Not a whole lot to say that's changed in the charts except for where breakout levels are. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys again soon. I'll catch you over here on Twitter. And I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.